Hello, good afternoon. My name is Jeff Beck and this is my model Rex Hamilton. Today we're going to be doing a grease makeup job. And there are four things, four principles that are very important for makeup. The initials are FBTD, which stands for Form, Blending, Texture, and Detail. Now in this case, the form that we're using today is Rex's head. Now with the B, that stands for Blending. What I'm going to be doing is a lot of blending techniques using primarily my finger and a little bit of Q-tips. For texture, I'm going to be using stipple sponges. For the last step, I'm going to be using paint brushes here, detail brushes. So with this character, we're going to be having a wig on Rex. So what I want to do, just to make my job a little bit easier for the makeup process, is just put a little gel in his hands, and he's going to rub that through his hair to just kind of get it out of the way and mat it down. <clears throat> now I talked earlier about the first stage, which is form. That is done. Now I'm going straight into blending. And um, I'm starting with my shadow. I get faster results by just going in and doing my shadow first with a black and really you know, blend it out so it doesn't look like just black makeup put on the face. And then I go in with the highlight, the white, to do the nose, the cheekbones, the forehead, the chin, and so forth. And really just get that um, pulling effect where you pull the face with the shadows and the highlights. It really gets the face to pull apart. One thing I want to talk about is how much makeup you should put on your finger. Okay, I'm going to just use this as an example. This is bad. You don't want to do this, because when you start with that, you end up with a big spot. If you're going in just to do something like uh, a definition of like this spot here, you end up with too much, and then you have to go in and take some of it out. So what you're really doing, go ahead and close your eyes. What you're really doing here is you're placing the makeup where you need to go. And even if it ends up in an area that you hadn't intended, if you don't have a lot on your finger, it's really not going to be that big of a deal to go back and fix it. You can see how I'm just going in and finding natural shadow areas. See this smile line right there? Very easy to find. And what you may even want to do is feel your face. I'm going to do it four reps. If I go and push like this, there is a concave area there, which is this natural um, cheek area where there's not much bone or little bone. And that's all I'm doing is finding those areas where there aren't any bones or recessed bone areas and shadowing them in. What I'm doing here is pretty much a versatile makeup that can be used just about anywhere. With the nose, by bringing some of the dark up right under the tip of the nose, makes it a little more pointed. And I'm just doing the same thing on the other side. Knowing where to put the makeup is the key. You don't want to put a shadow up on the cheekbone. You don't want to go in and paint blue shadows. Um, you don't want to end up with raccoon eyes, which are just really super, super dark eyes. You want to use the right colors. Q-tips are very um, helpful in drawing in where you want things to go. If you may recall, I did this shadow line with my finger. This one I'm doing with a Q-tip. Now, as you can see, turn that way just a little. It's very harsh. Well, that's not a problem. All you do is take a clean Q-tip and go back over and blend it out. Now and as I blend this in, this is where the highlight goes through the shadow. So this is going to be the hardest area of that. You need to make sure that this area is covered. It's the same reason why you don't wear white tennis shoes. Same reason why you don't wear blue jeans. You're creating an element of fantasy. Okay, now, this is my main finger that I use, right? So I wanna make sure that I get all this shadow off first. Now with the highlights, sometimes since I have a narrower area to work with, I'll go in and kind of place it, maybe even dab it, just to kind of get it into place. Now I can wipe my finger clean. I don't really have a lot on it, so I don't have to worry about having too much excess when I start to shift it around. 
Now, as you can see here, there is a mid-tone that's still there, which separates the shadow and the highlight even more so. There's that natural skin tone that's still there. I don't have to put a highlight every single area where there's not a dark shadow. I leave this a little bit mid-tone there so you can see the difference between where the shadow tapers off and the highlight begins. Not the lip I noticed. Go ahead and just open just a little bit. If you take a little white right at the bottom edge, it makes the bottom lip edge pop out a little. Now I'm going to go in before I actually get to texture, I'm going to go ahead and do a little red under the eyes. One thing I also want to say about doing red under the eye is that Strangely enough, or oddly enough, that the pigments in the red grease paint, for some strange reason, supposedly, can create a reaction around the eye. In other words, people have told me that red is the color that you shouldn't put on the eye because of something in the pigment of the red can create a reaction. Now we're going to go into the uh, third most important element, which is texture. I am going to be using these stipple sponges. So I'm going to start with the, the wide one and go with the neck because it's a pretty easy area to get to. And just tapping it along, most of the uh, texture that I'm doing is going to be over the highlights. You can put some heavier splotches in areas, you can put some more smoother spread out formations in other areas. One thing I just realized is I wanted to add a little more texture after the yellow. I'm going in with some green now. Now I'm going in with some black just to make those green moldy areas sink down just a little bit more. Okay. So doing the black over the green finishes up the texturing. And now I'm going to go in and do some detail lines. I save detail till the end because if I happen to run out of time, it's not absolutely crucial for it to finish the makeup. It's not going to ruin the makeup if I didn't have the time to do this. It only adds to what is already there. He could walk out right now and I would not be ashamed. However, if you have the time, you want to go back in and draw in expression lines and add to what is already there which is natural wrinkles and lines. Go ahead and scrunch up your face. So now as he do does this as he does this when he scrunches up his face like this he's adding the wrinkles Go ahead and do that again. Do that again. Naturally, he's adding these wrinkles by doing that. And that allows me to go in and see where I need to emphasize them. Here's what I'm going to do. Now, I know that he's going to be wearing a black wig. So I'm going to create a fake black eyebrow for him. Sometimes I anchor like the palm of my hand or the finger another part of my hand that I'm using so I can get more stability. But there's something else you could do to break up something that is symmetrical and add more of a dynamic feel to it. I'm just going to show you here. It doesn't have to be done. Basically this is a finished makeup. But I'm going to add maybe a cut or two to this. Scratch, cut, whatever you want to call it. It'll bring it alive a little bit. I'm going to do one out of the nose. We talked about this thing with orifices earlier. Things out of eyes and mouths and around mouths or noses draw you to those areas, especially when he's talking. This is um, a type of detail 
that really requires a leap of faith in your ability to think that you can pull it off. Halfway through it, it may look really stupid and cheesy, but you gotta keep going. It's like jumping into cold water. The only way to stay warm is to keep moving. So I'm stippling some red around the outsides of these cuts just to make that area look irritated. And I'm just going to do just a touch of blue to make it look a little more bruised. Okay, with a little bit of stage mud, I'm going to go ahead and Put this over top of these cuts with a Q-tip. And like I said earlier, if there was areas that had too much blue, well, this will cover over it nicely. Really brings a cut to life. I could have just painted over the black with red grease paint, but that doesn't really make it look open and breathing. As I mentioned earlier, things around eyes and mouths and noses are good. This really makes this eye look cut with a nice little slice going through it. Great way to add depth and gore to just a simple grease job. Okay, last step. Last step is you want to dollop these teeth. Monsters do not have white or even yellow teeth for that matter. They have charred nicotine black chipped teeth. Now technically you can let them roll out like that but I have just a little bit more time so I have this other color called nicotine which is pretty self-explanatory. Makes him look like an avid smoker. Our last step here is wardrobe. We had Rex throw on this black overcoat. I have this black wig here. We're going to go ahead and put that right on over top. So I'm going to use a little bit of this stretch spider webs to do one of two things at the same time. Cover up something like that and add an element to the overall makeup and costume of texture, kind of ghostly-like as well. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of put this over that area that was a little bit of trouble. Kind of adds an element of an ethereal look a little go more ghostly without covering up the whole thing. And I can spread this out as much as possible. And you have a nice little ghostly character be a great key line character. Ain't you ever seen wrinkles before?